Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today let's compare and taste two sides of the same coin, left bank and right bank wines of the famous Bordeaux winemaking region. Bordeaux is one of the largest winemaking regions in France. Due to its impressive size, it is hard to generalize about the region. One quite common way to talk about Bordeaux is referring to the banks of the rivers. Therefore, it is sometimes divided into left bank and right bank. Both banks offer a diverse range of wines, each reflecting its unique geography, climate, soils and dominant grape varieties. And today we are here to discuss and compare these distinctive factors in order to understand the key differences between the left bank and the right bank wines. We will finish this video with the tasting of two wines, each reflecting the typicity of their respective region. So stick around and let's begin! To discuss these two parts of Bordeaux, we first must define these areas geographically. The truth is, if we follow the Gironde Garonne river line and their tributary Dordogne, we actually see that Bordeaux wine region is divided into three parts instead of two. We have left bank with vineyards of Medoc and Graves, and we have the right bank with the best known appellations of Saint Emilion and Pomerol. But we also have the area situated between the two rivers, known as entre deux mers Although a significant amount of Bordeaux wines originate from entre deux mers area and one can indeed discover excellent value for money here, today our focus will be solely on left bank and right bank wines. One more disclaimer before we continue. There is a great number of absolutely amazing white and sweet wines made on the left bank. However, there are almost no white wines made on the right bank. Therefore, today I will solely focus on red wines of the left and the right banks, as this is not only the wine style that the majority thinks of when referring to the left versus right bank, but also because those absolutely magnificent whites and the forever living sweet wines deserve videos of their own. The left bank has vast, relatively flat terrain with very little elevation. However, in certain areas you can find vineyards that can have quite an impressive inclination. When I visited Lafitte, I was quite impressed by the vineyard right in front of the winery. It was really steep for Pouillac standards. On the other hand, the right bank tends to have a more exciting landscape and is definitely more interesting to drive through by a car. Although the elevation is not particularly remarkable in terms of numbers, especially when compared to other European vineyards, the area features gentler hills, ups and downs, and even terraced vineyards in certain sections. Overall, Bordeaux experiences maritime climate greatly influenced by the proximity of Atlantic Ocean. It means warm summers and cool yet not severe winters. Because of the Atlantic influence, the weather in Bordeaux can be quite unpredictable, which is why knowing your vintage is so important. And what is considered a good vintage on the left bank not necessarily will Will be great on the right bank. Medoc receives higher rainfall and in general precipitation decreases with vineyards further inland. On the right bank, because it is more sheltered from the ocean influence, the climate tends to be drier. And there are more noticeable differences between the summer and winter temperatures than on the left bank. The left bank is famous for its gravelly soils, and the best vineyards are those in close proximity to the Gironde River. On the right bank, vineyards are more characterized by clay and limestone-rich soils. These soil differences lead to significant variations in the choice of grape varieties. However, I would like to point out that there are clay and limestone soils on the left bank, just as there are gravel pockets on the right bank. In fact, I'm considering creating a video about soils and their impact on wine. Let me know in the comments whether you would be interested in that topic, or maybe it is just simply too geeky. 
In both areas, left and the right bank, blending grape varieties is the key, and rarely will you find a monovarietal wines. However, there are distinct differences between the main grape varieties, which is often influenced by the climate and the soil. The right bank is where the Merlot grape variety shines, constituting around 70% of all the vineyards planted here. It does enjoy the cool clay soils and thrives here. Merlot is followed by Cabernet Franc, an ancient grape variety and the parent of both Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. Malbec is also gaining increased attention in both parts of Bordeaux. On the left bank, Cabernet Sauvignon is the king, and the most prestigious and luxurious names of Margaux, Pouillac, Saint-Julien will definitely have large proportions of Cabernet Sauvignon in their blends. These areas also have the finest soils suited for Cabernet Sauvignon, namely gravel. But as I mentioned before, the left bank is a large area and not all of its land is well suited for this grape. And there are many areas with clay-rich soils that struggle to bring Cabernet Sauvignon to full ripeness. This is why Merlot also holds a significance here, particularly in the cooler northern Medoc vineyards. Alongside Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, Petit Verdot also plays an important role here on the left bank, contributing spiciness to the wines. All the factors we just discussed, location, 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 climate, soil, and choice of grape variety have a significant impact on the final wine style. In terms of winemaking, wines from prestigious appellations such as Pouillac and Margot on the left bank and Saint-Emilion and Pomerol on the right bank will definitely be aged in new French oak barrels. However, the percentage of new oak usually decreases as we move to the second and third labels. Due to the interaction of climate, soils, grape choice and winemaking, in general, red wines from the left bank will be more structured, oftentimes tannin-driven, and displaying firm acidity. These are the wines that immediately come to your minds when considering options for long-term cellaring. The finest examples are concentrated and intense, with a depth of flavors usually showing black currant, sweet toast, and garrigue. On the other hand, right bank tends to offer opulent wines, rich in ripe fruit with occasional jammy plumpness. However, I also find that these wines often show showcase more earthy aromatic complexity. They do have ripe red and black fruits, but these are usually wrapped in the notes of forest floor, black earth and tobacco leaf. I strongly believe that red wines from the right bank can age just as long as those from the left bank, but they are definitely also drinking quite nicely early in life. Of course, if everything was that easy, there would not be so many books written about Bordeaux region and its wines. The truth is there are many exceptions in both areas. And to identify the wines in blind, one not only needs a great experience in tasting these wines, but also have some very typical wines in the glasses. Both areas have their grand appellations and famous labels that are difficult to source, both because of the price and limited availability. The best known appellations of the right bank are the Saint-Emilion and Pomerol, while Fransac is also growing in recognition and certainly offers some value for money. On the left bank, however, the most prestigious appellations are Margaux, Pouillat, Saint-Julien and Saint-Estaphe in Medoc, and Pessac Léonien in Graves. Both areas also have their share of famous wine producers and labels that dictate ultra-premium prices. And one cannot distinguish between them which is more famous, more sought after, or more luxurious. We have Chateau Margaux, Latour, Lafitte, Aubryon, Mouton on the left bank, and we have Chateau Cheval Blanc and Petrus on the right bank. And we all know that I haven't even mentioned many of the great, great names. But there is one important note I want to mention. On the left bank, mostly Medoc and Graves, the estates tend to be much larger. On the right bank, wineries and their vineyard holdings are usually smaller. This could also be one of the main reasons why famed right bank labels such as Petrus, Le Pont, Cheval Blanc and Auson are so much harder to source than, for example, Lafitte, Latour or Aubryon. But now let's move to the tasting. I have here two, in my opinion, great examples from both regions. Not from ultra-premium labels, but definitely offering value for money. 
So let's compare them. I will start with wine from Saint Emilion. This is Chateau Capet Guillet from 2019 vintage. All right, the wine actually shows quite intense and concentrated nose. It is filled with black fruits, but not overripe or cooked. There is blackberries, plums, black cherries for sure. And it is layered with nice flavors of garrigue and toasty nuttiness. You definitely see quite nicely balanced the fruits next to the oak influence. Let's taste the wine. It is juicy, it is plump, it is really approachable. It is relatively young vintage, but I don't see reason why you shouldn't open this wine right now and enjoy it. The tannin is well managed. It is maybe youngish and, and sticky, but it is, uh, it is ripe. It is not harsh or aggressive in any way. Lively acidity that kind of brings this wine together, putting it into one beautiful shape. Let's taste wine number two. Wine number two comes from Chateau Pedesclos from Pouillac, which is 2018 vintage, a, I think, one of the hottest vintages in Bordeaux. Hmm. This shows, like, the nose is so intense with black currant. It is so typical. And whenever I see or whenever I smell black currant, I immediately think of Cabernet Sauvignon. Saint Emilion wine from the right bank, it was more open, juicy, and kind of, you know, approachable. This seems a bit focused tight and kind of maybe sitting back. It's not that it's not giving you anything on the nose or, you know, I haven't tasted it on the palate yet. It, it has that aromatic intensity and it has that tension. It just seems that this wine is evading me, like evading my nose, like I have to catch it. And now after I have swirled it in the glass, it also opens some nice vanilla flavors, some toastiness, and these definitely come from oak. Let's taste it. Yeah, I think this is what I told you in the theory part. It does have higher acidity. And despite the fact that it was a hot vintage, this wine shows really lovely, lively, mouth-watering acidity. I would want to say that it is almost defining this wine. Tannin? is elevated, it is firm, well-structured, but it works almost like a backbone to the wine. It kind of brings it together, it kind of puts it in the beautiful shape. I opened this wine for this tasting and now I think it does show a lot of potential to be aged. And I think like 10 years for this wine from Pouillac is nothing. And it makes sense because Pouillac probably makes one of the most structured and, uh, and like full-bodied wines of the left bank. It's becoming more approachable. I have finally catched it. Yeah, definitely here I have probably picked a very typical wines of each bank. And the theory that I discussed in the beginning really shows off well in these wines. First wine from Saint Emilion from Chateau Capeguillet being really open and plump and uh, juicy. While wine number two, uh, Chateau Pedesclos from Pouillac, being with more defined acidity, firmer tannin structure and definitely maybe showing more focus here. And as we discussed in the theory, it might not only be because of the geography, the soils or the climate, but it is also greatly based on the choice of grape varieties. And here, wine number one from Saint Emilion is based on Merlot grape variety. I think it constitutes more than half. And Chateau Pedesclos is based on Cabernet Sauvignon, which is why I had this very distinctive black currant nose. I think it is important to know that here here, in this tasting, it greatly shows the differences between two wine styles, but I don't want to say that one style is better than the other, it's just that they are different, and it makes sense for such a large winemaking region, which is Bordeaux. And if you like lush, more open, juicier wine styles, maybe you should look for your wines in the right bank. However, if you prefer more structured wines with higher acidity, maybe you should look for wines in the left bank. Saying this, we all know there are exceptions exceptions, of course. Let me know in the comments which bank you prefer the most and why. And if you like this video, you will definitely enjoy my other video on Rioja versus Rivera del Duero.